Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. In this video, we're going to be talking about a little bit of a meta-oriented discussion, but also only specifically talking about one card in general. And that card we're going to be talking about today is the newly unlimited, completely unlimited, from 0 to 3 Sangen that was moved out of the Forbidden status on the most recent Forbidden Limited list and went straight from 0 to 3 with its newest errata. Now, basically what I want to talk about is whether or not this card has a place in the format and has a place in Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore uh, with its errata because of the fact that Power Creep has existed, the way that its errata makes it function, makes it really change as far as how the card works, and ultimately whether or not it's even worth running in like decks or not, uh, based off my own uh, experiences and all that sort of stuff playing the card and basically just what I've seen and what I've heard from other people as well. For those of you that do not know, Sangen received an errata, and that's the reason that it could have gone from Forbidden to 3 on the Forbidden Limited list so rapidly. And that new errata is that you can still search monsters with 1500 or less attack. That part did not change. The parts that did change is that now Sangen's effect is a hard once per turn effect. You can literally only get one Sangen search per turn, period. And whatever card you search, cards with that name cannot be activated or their effects cannot be activated for the remainder of the turn that you search them. So, for example, let's say Sangen dies, you search Arch Phoenix Centric on your own turn. You cannot put Arch Phoenix Centric in your scale because that's an activation and the only thing you can do with that Arch Phoenix Centric is that you could normal summon it or pendulum summon it or any other Arch Phoenix Centric that you had in your uh, in your accessibility pool like in your extra deck or whatever. You can pendulum summon the eccentric Arch Fiend um, or you can normal summon it, but you cannot use its effect on board to destroy a monster, essentially. The only thing you can do with the monster that you search off Sangin is summon it, but not use any effects, and you cannot activate cards that have the name. So if you search scales, you cannot place them in your scales, because that's an activation of a card, and uh, you wouldn't be able to use their scale effects, because that's an activation of an effect as well. So, uh, basically, Sangin has been really, really watered down as far as what it used to be. And that's honestly something that I really agree with in hindsight. Now, when the original errata of Sangin was announced, a lot of people were against it. But it didn't really take long before we started realizing there's, there, there are a lot of interactions in the format that exist now that didn't exist when Sangin was banned. The most prominent one would be Metal Foes monsters interacting with Sangin because you'd be able to, in the current format, for example, with Metal Foes Zoo, you'd be able to normal summon Sangin, you'd be able to play a Metal Foes scale, pop the Sangin, search a Speedroid Terror Top, and then with Sangin's old text, you'd be able to then special that Terror Top, search Takatomborg, and then go into a Zodiac combo, drawing, you know, anywhere between two to five cards off of a Fusion Substitute combo, depending on how in-depth that combo could be fueled and supported by the rest of the cards in the uh, Metal Foes player's hand. So, now with Sangin currently eroded as it is, that play is not possible, and plays like that that are abusable are also not possible. So, that's a good thing, but the reason I brought up Arch Phoenix Centric and Metal Foes in these examples specifically is because at the Kissimmee, Florida Regional that was last weekend, I played with Metal Foes Zoo, with Bow Baboons, with Lone Fires. It was a very thick deck. It had a lot of cards. It was like a 53-card deck or something, and I played Sangin in my main deck. The theory was that off of a video that I did uh, about a week or so ago, I played Metal Foes Zoo with Sangins in it, and the theory was that you'd be able to do your combo where you, at some point along the way, drew into a Sangin. You'd be able to Pendulum Summon that Sangin, and you'd be able to use the Metal Foes scale to pop the Sangin and search your Max C, or if you already had Max C in your hand, you'd search a different hand trap, and then that would be just golden. But the issue is, is that in practice, at that regional, I built my entire deck off theory, by the way. I didn't test for that regional at all. I literally knew that I could play Metal Foes really well, and I knew that I had theories of like how the Sangin interaction would work and how that would be pretty decent and all that, and so I just went with it. So I built my deck the morning of, entered it, and by round two I realized that Sangin was the worst card in my deck, and I'm playing Metal Foes, which with Sangin's current errata, is the deck that in my opinion really supports the card the most out of anything in the format currently. I don't think Sangin is playable in literally any other deck in the format, whether it's an old rogue deck or it's something in the meta dominant decks. Melifos is like the only deck that can reliably pop Sangin on your own terms, thus allowing Sangin with its errata to be decent. But by round two, I realized that Sangin was just the worst card in my deck. And that's just a huge problem, uh, especially when you're already into an event and you realize, oh, this card's actually just not as good as I thought it was. Now, the reason why Sangin was the worst card in my deck is that there was no reason why I should be playing Sangin, because I'm never searching combo pieces with it, because of the aforementioned 
why am I searching combo pieces like Arch Phoenix Centric or Metal Foe Scales with it when I can't activate cards with those names during the same turn I search them? So that was a wash. So Sanya was literally only searching hand traps. But if I'm going second, if I'm losing die rolls and going second, why is Sangin in my list over the maximum amount of hand traps that I'm able to play in place of those Sangins? Relevant hand traps. For example, like, I could be playing the Maxi, I could be playing Triple DD Crow, I could be playing Effect Veilers or Ghost Ogres. I have tons of space in my deck to be able to play these hand traps and not play Sangin in my main deck, if you see what I'm talking about. Sangin was just the worst card in my deck in a deck that most directly supports how Sangin needs to operate in the current format, and that's a huge problem for trying to assess the card's playability. Now, I know that all of this evidence is very, very much anecdotal and subjective to my own experiences, but this is what I've seen and this is what I've talked with people about as well who've tried the card as well. Now, if I were to play Metal Foes at another regional, say there was a regional tomorrow and I played Metal Foes, would Sangin still be in my list? Yes, but it would not be in my main deck. I would definitely give Sangin another try. I would give it a try as like a two or three of in my side deck. Why? Because then I'm able to put it into my deck during controlled instances where I know I'm going first. I've just lost the previous game, I know I'm going first, so I'm going to go first and I'm going to take certain hand traps out of my deck and rotate Sangins in because I do not need the maximum number of hand traps in my deck because I'm not going second and trying to stop my opponent's turn one boards and I can rotate the Sangins in and rotate some of the lesser hand traps out like Ghost Ogres or duplicate copies of DD Crow or something and then in that instance I can draw into the Sangins instead of those hand traps off of my combos and stuff and then I could pop the Sangin and search Max C the most potent of all the hand traps in my deck and basically be good from there so I would definitely have Sangin in a list if I were going to test a list and go for another regional with Metal Foes or another just any sort of event with Metal Foes uh, in general. I would definitely give Sangin another shot, but it would be in a much more controlled instance of Sangin is literally only going to be in my deck one game out of an entire match. Uh, if that. Like, if I lose the die roll and then I win game one, and then game two I win as well, I wasn't siding Sangin in in a game that I know I'm going second, and I win that match outright in you know games where I only went second. Like, we're, we're not putting Sangin in, so... Basically, what I'm saying is that Sangin is a very fine card, but the only deck that can actually use it, like, effectively, currently, is Metal Foes. Now, the issue is, even in the Metal Foes deck, it was, like, the worst card in my deck, as I've already said, and it would definitely not be in my main deck, it would be in my side deck just to side in literally one game out of an entire match, it would be in my deck. And that's not even a minimum. Like I said, there would be some matches where it just would not be in my main deck because I would never side it in because I would never be going first. Uh, like, there's stuff like that. So ultimately, I think Sangin does have a place and it is playable in the format. It's just not nearly as good as it needs to be. Now, Sangin has always been that card that's just been not really justified to be on the ban list ever since it was banned. Like, it was banned in March 2013, right? And that was right before Dragon Ruler format, and it was right before Mermail Fire Fist format. And then ever since then, there's never really been a time where I've been like, ooh, Sangin would be really broken in this format. And then that was compounded even further by the fact that we got Burning Abyss cards in the fall of 2014, and Skarm was just an infinitely better Sangin for the purpose that people wanted Sangin to be legal for. People wanted Sangin to be legal so they could go Tour Guide into Sangin and then still have a Tour Guide in their deck when Tour Guide was at 2. So, that was an option that people wanted to have accessible to them. But then, Skarm came out, and Burning Abyss cards came out, and so then you were able to go Tour Guide into Skarm, overlay into any Xyz, detach the Skarm, and then in face search another Tour Guide, which was just infinitely better than the interaction you had with Sangin. So from that point on, Sangin's use was really just kind of not really valid. So this errata kind of felt like it was unwarranted when it was announced to us, but then, like I said, there's abusable things that could have been done with specific decks like Metal Foes, other decks like that that are very like good at just popping cards and just controlled destruction, very reliable controlled destruction. The Sangin uh, without the errata would have been really, you know, abusable during those, but it still would have just been one of those things that's just like it's another combo piece. Wouldn't have been, like, utterly game-breaking, it just would have been another consistency enabler. So, the errata... You could argue whether or not the errata was warranted or unwarranted for Sangin, but that's not really what I'm trying to discuss in this video. What I'm trying to discuss is whether or not Sangin has a place in the format. 
Unfortunately, it looks like no. Based off my own experiences with the card, based off the other people I've talked to that have tested the card, uh, that have done all that sort of stuff, Sangin just does not seem like it's anywhere near up to par with what it needs to be in order to be a place holder of any deck in the format. Because with its errata, a lot of the skilled interactions you'd have with the card are gone. A lot of the consistency enabling things that the card gave you um, and combo potentials are gone. Uh, there's there's just really not a lot you can do with Sangin now except just basically like search hand traps in a deck that can reliably destroy the card, i.e. currently Metal Foes being the most reliable example of being able to destroy cards at will to trigger the Sangin effect. But, like I said, Sangin was the worst card in my deck for that regional. 100%. It was definitely a card that I would not have in my main deck of another event that I went to with a Metal Foes deck. But it would potentially be in my side deck. I would give it another shot because, like I said, I could rotate some of the lesser hand traps out of my deck that I only want in my deck going second, and I could rotate Sangins in so that I could search the better hand traps. It's still not a combo card in any way, shape, or form. It's just taking out worse cards so that I could put in cards that search the better card, i.e. Max C. Like, that's really all there is about it. Um, now, I want to know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. I want to know what your guys' opinions are on the Sang and Arata. Um, like, I still personally like, like the interaction that it has with Metal Foes, but like I said, through my playing and through testing, it was just, it was terrible. It was terrible in the main deck because you lose the die roll and you go second and you're staring at it and you're like, this could have been any hand trap that could have been in my deck instead of the Sangin because I'm literally only using Sangin to search hand traps. Or it could have, uh, or it was uh, one of those things where you have to go first and you have to open a combo hand and then you have to be able to get your Sangin onto the board and pop it with a Metal Foe scale that you haven't used in your combo string. Uh, so like there's there's it's like one of those things where it's like it's not good going second one and then two when you're going first It requires a lot of things to be going right But those things go right frequently enough that it could be warranted for you to play the card Stuff like that That's really all that I'm trying to say for this uh, is that you just you have the ability to play it But it's kind of weird and I want to know what you guys think about this card in the comments down below And I want to know what you guys think about it in Metal Foes as well uh, in the comments down below. This is more of a discussion than just me spouting my opinions on things. I would definitely like to hear some feedback from you guys in the comments down below. But that's been my spiel. Uh, like, Sangin, I think the card is perfectly fine to be legal. Um, I think the card probably would have been fine to be legal without an errata. Like I said, there were some abusable things that you could do with it. But again, it would have just been a consistency enabler for decks. Now, some people probably wouldn't have liked that anyway. But still. I think that it could have come back with no errata and probably been fine in the grand scheme of how Yu-Gi-Oh goes, but Konami didn't want to play with that as a risk because they were like, ooh, this card's banned, even though it got banned because, like, people kept summoning it off Tour Guide. Like, that's literally the only reason Sangin was banned. Sangin had no reason to be banned other than the fact that Tour Guide summoned it, and Konami was tired of that nonsense for whatever reason. I don't understand why. Um, that's a completely, di like, completely separate topic, but anyway... Again, I want to know what you guys' thoughts are on Sangin and how it falls into the current format in the comments down below. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month for a significant amount of Konami product or a high dollar card of the format, whatever the flavor of the month ends up being. If there's no like significant Konami release during the month that I can load up on uh, and give out to people, then I'll be doing a high dollar card. Just something really simple like that, right? But other than that, if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked down below in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with thus far. So definitely go check out their site if you're looking to acquire anything, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that's it for this video. As always, thanks for watching, as I've already said. Thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video. Again, Super curious as to about what you guys think about Sangin in the comments down below. Can't wait to hear some responses.